one, this feels very strange to be sitting here in full makeup with a wet head of hair, but um, many of you know that I recently picked up the Revlon, I think it's the One Step Styler, and it has been sweeping the internet. Everyone has been talking about it, and there have been many videos made about how they use it, many that were done far better than what I'm about to attempt, but many of you asked if I would show you how I use it, and I will do that from start to finish. So the reason why I decided to go ahead and do this video, even though I think, like I just said, I think other people have done it far better than how I'm about to do it, is precisely because I am not a professional. I have no training, clearly, in how to do hair, and, and I feel like I am sort of like, when I'm asked to describe my channel, a lot of times I say I feel like I'm sort of like the every woman's guide to whatever. Like, I'm just like the average consumer. I don't have any extra training in how to do any of this stuff. So if I show you, the other people just like me, how I'm using this, maybe you can relate to it in some way um, better than when a professional is walking you through it or someone who actually knows what they're doing. So hopefully you find this helpful. If you don't, feel free to click out at any point in this video. And um, like I said, lots of other people are using it. The first thing I always do is spray it with both a heat protectant and sort of detangler. And what I've used for years is the Aveda Brilliant Damage Control. I'm down to the little bitty, there's this much left. This might be the last use. Luckily, I have another bottle waiting in the wings. And hopefully I don't spray this all over my camera. If you're new to my channel or you've always wondered what my hair is actually like in its natural state, I think you can kind of see it has some curl wave maybe to it. Um, it's been in the towel about 20 minutes or so, so it's still pretty wet. Left to its own devices, if I just let it air dry, these bits get very curly, almost like ringlets. I get some waves here. I get some serious frizz around my face. This bit gets a little bit straight. It's I have every texture you can think of. I have to do something with it. I cannot just let it air dry. It never works out. Uh, so now I brush through the Brilliant Damage Control. I love this wet brush. I use it to brush my hair dry too oftentimes. When I travel, I will only pack this so I don't need to bring two brushes with. And now that I am using the Revlon Styler, I don't bring the additional styling brushes as well. It's very handy. Okay, next, I do my styling products. I like to cocktail. What I've been cocktailing with are two favorites, independently but together. They're magical. It's the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day 5-in-1 Styling Treatment, which you can use all by itself, and it's wonderful. Um, I particularly like to add the Aveda Smooth Infusion Nourishing Styling Cream because with the Revlon Styling Tool, it's really a smooth blowout. So this helps make it even smoother. Particularly today as I'm filming, it is a wet, rainy day, and I can use all the smoothing help I can get. So I just do, let's see if I can be precise with this. It's about a nickel amount. I don't know. I'd say a quarter of a teaspoon. How about that? Of each, a squidge. That's the exact measurement. It's a squidge. Looks like that. And I go like this. And then I focus this mostly on the ponytail portion of my hair. I don't get too close to the scalp. I mean, I get a little bit up there, but that's just going to weigh down my hair. Okay, so that is in. And if I want to make sure it's really well in, I'll just give it another brush. So we're ready to go. So the first thing I do is I section off my hair. And you're going to need two kinds of clips if you're following along at home. This kind of clip, I guess this is, I don't know what this is called, this kind of clip. And then these are alligator clips, these kinds. So I take thumbs right about at the ear low, the middle of the ear and just kind of go around the back of my head. So there's not very much back there. Twist it up and just get it out of the way. Now we're not left with it very much. I mean, this is really not a lot. And this is what we're going to do first. And we're going to use this bad boy. So like I mentioned, um, my hair is not particularly thick. There's a good amount for what I have. Um, and it does like to go wavy if left to dry on its own too long. I have heard people say that this burns them, that it's fried their hair. I've been using this consistently twice a week for almost a month now. I've had no issues. So I put it on full blast. I put it on high also because I'm a very impatient person and I just want this, to me this is a chore. I could sit all day and put on makeup, but I just want my hair done. So I put it on high. There is the option of obviously off, Cool, low, and high. That's all you got. So, like I said, I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but for me, the object is to just get it done 
in as attractive a way as possible as quickly as possible. Okay, so before I turn it on, which will negate any ability to speak to you, all I do is just put it under, hold it for about five seconds just to get the roots dry because that's if you don't get this dry, the whole thing gets wonky. And then I run it through and then I start to roll it in, hold it again for maybe five seconds, pull it down. And I'm basically just doing what I would be doing with two hands with a round brush, just over and over. And you have to note that there is this little handle knobby thing at the end. And hold this, use this as your friend. So you're using two hands to twirl it. It gives you much better control. This doesn't get hot and it'll make the job go a lot faster. Okay, this is where I turn on the fun dance music. You get your dance party on. I'm gonna dry this first layer of hair. Now, just before I get onto the next layer, I am gonna go through the whole layer, just on cool, very quickly, kinda to set it before I move on to the next part. Okay, that's it, bottom layer is dry. I mean, as you can see, if I was using a real round brush, it, the curl or the bend would probably be much more pronounced, but it's smooth, there is a bend to it. I'm happy, it was really fast, and we're moving on. So, this is where I deviate from everybody else. Like I said, I am not the most talented when it comes to doing hair. I'm not trying to be self-deprecating, this is just fact. But, and I also wanna get it done quickly. I have found if I, let my layers down together. Like for instance, most people will let another layer down. It'll meld with the layer that's dry. That's more hair that you're going through. I found that the whole thing goes a lot quicker and I can concentrate and focus on what needs to be done if I get this layer out of the way. So I take my little clips and I just clip them back, one on each side. Those are out of the way. So now when I let this next layer down, all I'm drying is the part of the hair that is wet. I'm not going over the already dry section. I also imagine this helps with heat damage to avoid going over and over and over with heat, the same sections of hair. So I think you know the drill. So now all I'm drying is this middle section from like here to here, same idea gonna go all the way around my head, do with a cool shot. Okay, so I'm working my way around my head. I did wanna point out there's one place where it actually does get rather hot and uncomfortable, and I wanna show you how I combat that before I turn on the hair dryer again. So when I'm drying my hair right in front of my ears and I wanna hold it like this, the air, the heat comes all the way around 360. So it's as it's drying out this way, it's also sending heat right at my head. So. When it's here, it's setting fire to my ear, which is obviously more sensitive than other parts of your body. So all I do is while it's sitting here for the few moments I'm doing this, I just put my hand like this. And it's perfectly fine for the few seconds that I'm doing this, as I will show you right now. to dry this section. I'm gonna keep going around my head, do the next layer, and like I said, I will come back when we do the tippy top because that's a little bit different. Okay, next layer, I just kinda go right to the, here, whatever this, top of my temples, right here. So let's pin these guys back, almost forgot to do that. And for the top layer, I do everything but just basically, if I had bangs, Kind of take those away. This is hard to see in my tiny little monitor. And normally I'm standing up in my bathroom. Is anybody else just a total creature of habit? Like I cannot sit down and do my hair. This is very awkward for me. So many reasons. Anyway, there's not a lot going on here. I'm really just pinning up the very front bit of my hair, getting that out of the way, and focusing on just these chunks around the back. 
And we're going to do essentially the same thing we've been doing on the other two layers, but as I blow it dry, I'm going to kind of hold it up and go up, 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 up. Get the bangs part done. I don't have a lot left. Loudy, I was very excited about this. But this is the most important part. This is the most important part. Because this is really the part that determines if this is all messed up, then nobody cares what's going on underneath. So, also the most difficult to do while sitting down for me and film. Um, there's really nothing here. This is just, what you're, it's not wet, really. It's just dark roots is what you're looking at. Um, I kind of just pull it all forward. I'll just show you what I'm going to do. I just pull it all forward and just kind of run it through and then, you know, pull it up. And then kind of do the same with the sides, but just pull it up. And that's it. So that's it. And then we're going to just kind of foof it a little bit and I'll show you the finished product. Now, aside from the fact that it's this is tempting me to cut all my hair off and get a bob, um, not gonna do that. This is the part where we just kind of get in here. We kind of put the hair where we want it. Doesn't my, doesn't my hair look a lot thicker than it actually is? It, this is insane. Now I'm gonna go in and just kind of blend it all together, make sure everything is dry, because I know we all hear this from our hairdressers. This is why a professional blowout looks, well, one of the many reasons why a professional blowout not just looks better, but lasts longer than anything we do at home. They take their time and make sure every single strand of your hair is completely dry before they let you leave the chair. Most of us don't have that patience. We have things to do, we wanna get out of there. And so we don't take the time to finish drying our hair. And that is when you get weird little kinks and the back of your head, hello, um, gets the weird little squiggle down the middle and all that stuff. So I'm gonna go through and kinda of go and move my hair around where I want it and make sure everything's dry and then we'll see what we get. Okay, I just went all the way around my head once on high. I am gonna do it again once more on cool. But I wanted to also give you one more little tip before we end this project. Um, if you're not sure if your hair is dry, because sometimes it's so hot um, that it feels wet to the touch, I have noticed that when the brush gets to a wet spot, it tends to stick to that spot a little more. It doesn't go as smoothly through it. Like it really goes right through the dry pieces, but it'll cling a little bit more, not get stuck like tangled, but cling a little bit more to the wet pieces. So that's kind of where it helps you almost know, okay, I need to focus a little more time on that one piece. So I'm gonna go once more through on cold just to kind of set everything and I will give you my final thoughts. Would I recommend that all of you run out to Ulta, get online, track the sucker down and buy it? Pretty much, sort of depends. If you have shorter hair, this isn't gonna, if you can't wrap this a couple times around your hair strand, this is, this is a no, it's not going to work for you. If you don't want a sleek blowout like this, again, no, probably not. However, I will say this, um, this is a great way to get just your hair dry and smooth, and it is a great base to then go and add in your curls the way you want it. That is if you don't mind doing two different heat processes to your hair. Since I have picked this guy up, I have not, really touched my hair dryer a couple of times. I tried to see if it would speed up the process by kind of rough drying my hair first with the hair dryer and then going in with this. I did find that for me, my particular hair type, if it's too dry, if I don't time it just right, it just starts frizzing. Um, so I, it's best to work with, you know, pretty wet hair. Um, 
I think this is a very invaluable tool if you are someone like me who round brushing, the perfection of round brushing is just not, it's not in my wheelhouse. Like I said, I'm not a professional. I'm just an everyday suburban mom who just wants to get her hair styled. This is, I didn't put any finishing products on this. I didn't even go through, usually I get the little curly things here. I haven't gone through. I had my flat iron ready to go. I don't, I'm not going to touch it. I don't need it. I think this is an invaluable tool for the average user, the average consumer. I think it is wonderful. It's pretty lightweight. I think it's actually lighter than my hair dryer. So um, I think it's, it's very easy to handle. The little knob at the end makes it very, if you need a little more stability, I think it's wonderful. Clearly I'm recommending this to you. Um, it's far less expensive than most hair dryers and when you add in the cost of a decent round brush, it's less expensive than those combined. So yes, go pick one up. Um, most of the sellers, I will below I will link to the sellers that I would recommend that all have good return policies so that if you don't like it, by all means bring it back. Don't be stuck with something you don't like and waste the money. So those are my thoughts. I'd like to hear um, what you think of this, if you've tried it. Also, if there are other videos out there that do a better job or a different job of explaining how to use this, leave links to those in the comments below. Sometimes YouTube sees those comments as spam and shoves them into my spam box, but I will prove them as fast as I see them and put them back out into the general population of comments. So thank you so much for uh, watching and hanging along with me while I get my hair done by me. And uh, now I'm gonna go out and let the rain ruin it. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.